Hello everybody, I hope you are having the most excellent of days. I've got a couple of packages here, so let's have a mailbag. I'm kind of excited to get into this stuff. So, um, I don't know how many items will be in the mailbag total, but I want this stuff. So, uh, first of all, we have one that I have no idea what it is. Ah, great. Okay, so these are, I believe, they could be 10 millimeter, but I think they're 11 millimeter standoffs. I actually have the thing over here. Um, we'll compare them. I don't have a full unit, but I did a previous video. These look like they're a little shorter. No, they're the right ones. Um, I did a previous video about the RGB to HDMI uh, adapter, and essentially it's a Raspberry Pi Zero with a shield on top of it, and you really do kind of need these little spacers to stand the Raspberry Pi off from its uh, board, or I guess more specifically the um, RGB to HDMI off from the uh, Raspberry Pi and so uh, these are perfect for that and I did not have any or I had very few of them and I've got at least five RGB to HDMI's to put together and uh, these things are actually kind of hard to come by there's a lot of them that have a male thread on one side and female on another uh, but to find these in any kind of quantity at all female to female um, whatever they are 10 millimeter 12 millimeter something like that um, is real hard and so I was happy to find these. I think I paid a little bit more for them than I would have wanted to, maybe five or six bucks. But it's an important safety thing to make sure that my boards are properly stood off. So there we go. Uh, you know, it's not good to sit all day. So I like to stand up while I'm working on the retro stuff. And I think that's healthier. I just got back to my first bike ride from uh, my crash. If you don't know, I had a pretty decent bike crash a couple months ago. And uh, I've got my bike all back together and I'm all healed up. So I'm happy to be back on the trail. And I'm happy to be back opening packages. So let's see what we got. We have uh, some more retro-ish stuff, I guess you could say. Uh, these are 10 male gender changers for VGA. And I'm going to grab a cable and show you why I got these. The one I was going to get is way too hooked up to something. So I'm just going to grab a standard VGA cable. And uh, the reason why I want these is for one thing, uh, space is kind of at a premium. I've gotten some awesome retro donations and bought some awesome stuff lately. And so uh, I'm trying not to, to fill up everything with space and things like having a VGA extension cable uh, take up space. So I was able to get these little adapters. And now if I want to extend a VGA cable and put two males together, I can do that. Beyond that, for a lot of the projects, I wind up making these modified um, VGA cables. Like I'll remove some pins out of here or change something about this end. And what this allows me to do with this is connect. I need a female on the side that I'm going to connect my capture card to. So um, I can have these custom cables, I can extend them, and I can basically take any of these custom cables and connect them to my capture card without much fuss. Now the issue is that you can get one of them for three or four dollars on eBay or Amazon, or I was able to get 10 of these for about 10 bucks on Amazon. And so ultimately it just kind of made sense to not have just one of these adapters that was going to be moved from thing to thing to thing, but to get 10 of them, they don't take up any space, way less space than a single extension cable. And uh, now I've got a pile of them. So uh, this was about the only gender changer I didn't have, and it was about the only one I needed. So I got it. And last but not least on this package, there's a couple things in here. Um, we may do some more things after this. We may not, we'll see. So I got one and two. And the first thing is a little obvious, so we're just gonna open this up. And um, this is a set, a set of these plastic razor blades. Now I know you can 3D print these things, but um, these are obviously razor blades, but they are plastic and that allows you to use them for scraping on things where you don't want the blade to do any damage. Uh, there's a lot of things like old computers, getting gunk off of old computers and feet off of old computers or uh, cleaning things that are soft, you know, like the mat or something like that. If you want to scrub on here, you don't really want the blade to be able to dig into the mat and to destroy itself. You'd much rather destroy the blade. So um, I got three of these plastic things. I'm sure my wife will wind up with at least one of them. And uh, they came with like a hundred extra blades in the box. And again, like I said, you can 3D print them, but I think at, um, the whole set was like seven bucks. So I think it's well worth 
having this giant set of three of these things and a hundred blades. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and write plastic because I do have metal ones here. There we go. Uh, so we've got plastic written on there so I don't forget. And um, yeah, so these things are really handy for that type of thing. Uh, now this other one, honestly slipped in my mind. Uh, I ordered a while ago and I saved it for you guys. Um, ah, yes. Okay. So these are arcade buttons now. Uh, I think it's another thing that I need to grab um, some other supplies. So I have been working on some enclosures for my uh, open source buzzer project uh, for game shows and stuff like that. And there is nothing better than these HAP buttons. These things are legit. They're the real deal. They, I uh, can't remember how to put this thing in, uh, like this. They um, are amazing because they have a real arcade feel and a real arcade durability and a replaceable micro switch and all that kind of stuff. The downside is that they add some width by the time you start putting stuff out the side. Uh, they just take up a little bit more width than I would prefer. And so um, what I did was I ordered some of these off Amazon. Now these do not have the same click. They don't have the, I mean they click, but not the same kachunk chunk as a real hap button, but they have a couple of advantages. The first thing is that they are shallower. Um, you're saving about an inch there, maybe even a little bit more in overall depth. You're also saving a significant width, which means that you can put these things in smaller enclosures. And these things have the additional benefit of, I think this is five volts. There's a five volt LED in here to light these things up as well as, um, the included micro switch. Now the thing with these, you have to solder them very quickly because it's really easy to melt this thing and mess up the contacts. Uh, you could also use crimp connectors. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do for my projects. Um, but, and then I think these things also, I think you can print on that little thing in there if I'm not mistaken, or at least put a sticker on that thing in there and give it some kind of label. So you get the light up, you get the, um, you know, the, the more compact design and that will allow me to do things in this type of form factor and get a lot uh, a lot cleaner build. Now this thing's a little hard to not cross thread, but once you get it, kind of cool. Um, so this would actually take care of the light as well as the button, and then you could make this battery operated and not even have to have any kind of wire sticking out of the thing. So uh, I'm working on some cool enclosures. That's kind of a, a side project, but really loving goofing around with that thing. All right, somehow I got four more packages from when I filmed that other part of the video this morning. So uh, this one isn't even a box. It's literally just a thing of foam with some tape around it uh, and my address showing. So we're gonna slice around this way and see what happens. Oh my gosh. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess AliExpress has sent worse, but uh, these better all at least be the same size. Uh, I ordered a bunch of sockets and uh, man, I'm telling you, like that is some kind of special. I think I ordered a hundred of several different size sockets and uh, I'm just gonna assume that there's a hundred in here. Um, it's kind of one of those things I've gone back and forth, but as I buy cheap stuff from AliExpress, uh, I've pretty much learned you have to socket all of it. Uh, you're kind of wasting your time if you don't, especially because I have the ability to test the chips, but it's not uncommon for me to test them. They test good and then, you know, use them for a couple of minutes or whatever, and then they just croak out. So, um, yeah. And of course, like, again, it's not enough that I buy the chips from. I have to do the work to... Uh, straighten the pins myself too. So these are one, two, three, four, five, is that four, eight, 16 pin sockets. So the deal with these, and one of the reasons why I need so many of them is that the uh, old computers, their RAM is 16 pins. And so a lot of times that stuff is soldered to the motherboard. And if I go through and replace one, especially of certain kinds, I just go through and do it all. And if I'm going to do it all, I might as well go ahead and socket it. All right, next up we have, Little I squared C modules. I have no idea. What, oh, 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 oh. Um, I think these are um, I squared S modules. 
Yeah, I squared S amplifiers, and I had a project in mind. Yeah, something, uh, there's some things you can do with the ESP32 to play decent quality audio and amplify it with this module. So I got two, I got three um, of those modules to kind of screw around with, and I have a project in mind, and uh, these were really cheap, so I thought it was kind of worth getting a couple to play around with. They also have them on Amazon, they're pretty reasonable there too, so. Um, yeah, these are some I squared S modules. So again, you can uh, transfer audio relatively high quality and amplify it with this one little board. Next up. Oh yeah, I've been waiting for these. All right, these are 10 millimeter red LEDs and uh, I have a plan for these. I've got a project for these. I had a couple, um, I bought like a 10 pack of of uh 10 millimeter leds but i only had i think two red in that package and i needed seven or eight or ten of them so um it wound up being cheaper to just get a 50 pack while i was at it so now i've got a bunch of these chunky uh leds so pretty excited about that all right as it always happens as i finished filming that mailbag a bunch of other stuff came in so i'm just going to open these pretty quickly as a group um this one I don't understand why it's packaged like this, but uh, this was in a bag and these are a couple more um, OLED screens just in a bag. Um, that's some AliExpress level crap right there. So hopefully they survived, otherwise they'll be going back. But um, yeah, I've got two more screens and I don't have the other ones next to me, but these are 1.3 inch screens. So uh, it's, you probably can't tell from the last video, but considerably bigger. I got off my lazy butt and decided to just go ahead and find another screen, but you can tell they're considerably bigger than the other ones. Uh, this is the 0.91 and this is the 1.3. So um, just kind of bigger, different aspect ratio. And I think this is gonna fit into my enclosure a little bit better. So, yep, as you can see, it fits exactly in my little bracket here. There's a little pocket for it and uh, will give me an OLED screen. I've got to get some of the support out still here, but, um, Overall, I think it will do what I need it to do, and I'll be using these ones in some other projects and other brackets. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up all three of these together because they are part of a binge I went on the other day. Okay, so here we go. Um, one of the things is that I found myself using these, especially these, all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so used to dealing with big hardware and stuff like that. So doing more of this electronic stuff has really um, leaned on my very small collection of screws. And so I use this a lot, but you'll notice you've got M2, M3, M4, M5. Uh, what you don't see in here is something that has come up like nearly every time I need something is that the world uses a lot of M2.5 and that's pretty freaking annoying. Um, so I didn't have hardly any of those. This kit had a few of them, but basically topped out uh, at eight millimeters. So, you know, just relatively small M2.5 screws. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say that like if I had my preference, I would have gotten all the same head, same color, but it's just not happening. Like if you wind up getting the head you want, you'll buy a whole bunch of hardware you don't want. So it's a real problem. The next most obvious thing is why don't I just run down to Lowe's or whatever and pick up, you know, those little bags of screws. And the problem is the prices have gone up so much. You pay $1.50, $1.75 right now for some of those, maybe $1.34 for the bag hardware and you get four or six screws. And so um, rather than doing that every time I need a screw, and to me, the real cost is taking off from working, going to Lowe's, um, I decided to go on a little hardware binge. So the most obvious one that I got is uh, this one, kind of easy to see. You can see it has M1, M1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.7 uh, in a fair number of sizes. So very tiny, tiny screws. And I don't think I'll be using these a ton, but when you need them, you need them. And it's way better than going to Walmart and trying to get something from the uh, little, you know, the little eyeglass sections of that. So I don't need this very much, but it was cheap and uh you know so i'm glad to have this one now this is the one that i sort of went searching after that got all of this going and uh there's a lot of m 2.5 and m2 screws in this just in some slightly bigger sizes than i had before i don't need to take them all out of the package 
I'm sure you believe me, but um, yeah, just some longer versions of the M2.5 screws and stuff. And again, I say this all the time with this kind of stuff. My plan is you buy the assortment and then when you run out of something, you get more of that particular thing. So, um, you know, I know that I needed some M2.5 times 20 and 18 and 16. I have some long Atari cartridges that the only way to screw them together is with these longer screws. And so, uh, you know, I hate paying for 340 screws, but on the other hand, like this isn't going to take up a lot of space and I've sort of fill in the gaps of what I was missing on this kit. Um, moving over to this one and I'll probably be, the more I've been using my screws, the more I realize some other gaps. This is a, uh, this is not metric, this is standard, and this is a 440 set. And so uh, four, number four screw, 40 threads per inch uh, TPI. And so you can see that this goes up to three, what is it? How, oh, one inch. So I think that the more I've been using this stuff, I kind of want these in four, six, and eight. Um, because again, like, <laughs> you've seen my wall of hardware, as much hardware as I have, I feel like I never freaking have what I need. And so, um, especially now that I'm doing the smaller things, this standard set, it just covers this one size. And again, I think it's worth getting the ones, uh, for number six and eight as well. Last but not least, we have this one and this one kind of topped out at M1.6 and 1.7. Um, and this one has a little bit of overlap. So you've got 1.4 but then it kind of quickly jumps up to two point, a lot of M2.5, M3s. Uh, so this just gives a little bit more variety in that center section. And this seems to be the sweet spot. Um, the M2.5 through M3 seems to be the sweet spot of what I'm using. And I'm, you know, as I go through these things, I'm using them like crazy. So, uh, you know, this just kind of gives me a little bit more variety in the sweet spot with some of the longer screws. And uh, again, it sucks to buy all this hardware and it's one of those things that kind of hurts when you do it. But um, I think the whole set was like 40 bucks. And uh, I think this is enough stuff for one video. I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the love you're showing the channel. I will have the links down in the description. Buying from those links is just such a joy for me. In fact, I think actually um, all of these things came from uh, the little bit of affiliate money that I get from you guys buying the stuff. So you guys are buying stuff from the channel and that allows me to buy this stuff. Um, I don't do Patreon and all the other stuff. So it is really the, uh, you know, one of the best ways to support the channel that and sharing the love and commenting and liking and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.